He is one of the most successful coaches in the Central Canada Hockey League history, having won five consecutive championships, and he's responsible for bringing Pembroke its only National Junior A title in 2011. Today in conversation at TV Coach Co with Sheldon Keefe. Welcome to the studio, Sheldon. Thank you, Jamie. I think a lot of people know your history, or your short history, but very successful history with the Lumber Kings, uh, and I want to talk about that today, but I want you to take us back and tell us about growing up in Brampton uh, with your family and uh, where that love of hockey began. Well, sure. I think, uh, you know, it started off really just like any, you know, any other young Canadian, Canadian boy in Brampton started to play minor hockey at a young age, uh, maybe four or five, and played on a number of teams uh, through the winter. Um, you know, I played on multiple age groups when I was younger to, to play on more than one team and spring teams, summer teams. Uh, really lived the game, obviously, through the passion of my, my father, um, you know, bringing myself and then, and then my younger brother, Adam, to the rink uh, consistently. Grew up through in, in Brampton playing locally uh, for, at the time, what that was called the Chincuzi Minor Hockey Program. And now uh, Brampton and Chincuzi have, have uh, uh, grown into just one program uh, you know, for the whole city. Um, but played there all the way up until Pee Wee, and then, and then joined what was the uh, Metro Toronto Hockey League, now the Greater Toronto Hockey League, the GTHL, and played for the Toronto Young Nats uh, into Pee Wee. And um, really, that's when hockey started to, you know, uh, turn the corner for me, and you start to think about things such as the OHL, and ultimately, ultimately the NHL. Okay, and from Brampton, and, and from playing minor hockey, and those stepping stones into the GTA. That eventually led you to Junior A and then to Major Junior A. Talk, talk about how that all came to about. Yeah, I think you, you know you played Pee Wee hockey uh, two years of uh, two years in in uh, Toronto with the Young Nats. Um, had great seasons there. You know, great memories. Everything from the Quebec Pee Wee tournament and, and ultimately winning uh, the Bantam All Ontario Championships um, that we won. And then from there went on to play Junior A hockey. With the Quinty Hawks in, in Deserano, and um, you know, had a good season there. Good season of development. Had a very young, very young team. Uh, I think at the time, we had as many as 14, 16 year olds on that team, which is pretty unheard of if you look around the country of junior hockey now. But the rules were different then, and you could have as many as you wanted. Uh, and that team was extremely young. Had a number of high-profile OHL uh, draft picks that went on to good, went on to good OHL careers. I played a year there, went on to play a year for the Caledon Canadians after being drafted by the Plymouth Whalers, um, but chose to uh, pursue the NCAA for myself and committed to Northern Michigan University. Played an extra year of junior A hockey in Caledon, closer to home, and uh, had a great year of development that year. Grew, uh, grew a lot, got stronger, um, had, a, had a good season with the team in scoring. And at that time, felt that uh, maybe the, the NHL, and in particular the NHL draft, was something that was more realistic for myself. Um, and decided to pursue the, the major junior route. And my rights were traded from Plymouth to the St. Michael's Majors and, and uh, joined their team that year after Caledon. Um, played half a season there before being traded to the Barry Colts, where I played a season and a half uh, before finishing my, my amateur or junior hockey. And not a bad run in Barry, rookie of the year, first year, and then the second year, a scoring title, which eventually led you to being drafted into the National Hockey League. Yeah, for sure. I, I had a really great rookie season. I was fortunate uh, to go into the league as an 18-year-old. You know, you know, given that I played that extra time at the junior A level, I thought was very important uh, for my development on and off the ice. I stepped in and played a lot as an 18-year-old and had, uh, had a great season and was able to put myself on the map despite being an undersized player. Given the amount of offense I was able to create, uh, and I think just how I played the game, um, the teams were confident enough to, you know, to believe in me, and ultimately Tampa Bay selected me after my, really my first year uh, completing in the OHL, and then attended, attended Tampa Bay training camp, played an exhibition game um, that fall um, before going back uh, to play my final year in the Barry, where was fortunate enough to be the captain and, and then uh, won the OHL championship. So really it was a great, great uh, junior experience for me on the ice in terms of what, what, uh, what I was able to accomplish. 
and 121 points will get you noticed uh, at Major Junior A. Your family, did, did they believe that the NHL was a real possibility? I think every family wants to believe it, but when did it clue in for your, for your dad? Well, I think it would probably be you know, going into the OHL and succeeding uh, the, way, the way that I did. Obviously, a lot of people, as you said, believe in their, in their kids, and, but you never really know, and even I never really knew how good I was or how good I could be until you really get against the best competition. You really don't know, and the OHL really is uh, the best competition uh, in the world for junior hockey. Uh, I guess more the Canadian Hockey League, but uh, for me it was the OHL specifically. And uh, to be able to, su to succeed and be as productive as I was, you know, against players that were very high profile players that you knew were going to be high NHL draft picks and I was able to compete, uh, compete and excel against them, you know, obviously you start to really get excited and start to think that, you know, you've got a chance. A lot of your, your, your past, your early years in hockey and playing at a competitive level have been linked to David Frost, who, who we both know is a, has been a controversial figure in your life uh, as an NHL agent. How did you meet David? Well, it started, uh, with him it started coming out of Brampton. He's from Brampton, obviously I was from Brampton, and a uh, summer hockey program was put together in Brampton, uh, really as we were the summer before going into the big Pee Wee year. Um, and a bunch of the parents from the Brampton side, I was really the only representative from the Chincuzi side, but a bunch of the parents from the Brampton side put together a team and uh, Frost was coaching at the time the Junior A Brampton Capitals and they approached him about uh, running this team of so some of the best players in, in the city of Brampton uh, to put together a summer hockey team and that's really where I met him and um, he would coach me for the first time and uh, you know, from there, he he then took that large group of us from Brampton uh, to go to play in the in the MTHL with the Toronto Young Nats. A lot has been written uh, about the the David Frost situation over the years, and I'm not going to to get into all of that. But certainly, it did create some issues for you moving forward, particularly once you got into the coaching ranks in Junior A, as far as progressing. And, and then the chance finally came um, after the Lumber King's success to go to the Ontario Hockey League. And that must have been a, a wonderful feeling to get that signed deal to go to Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah, it was for sure. I mean, you know, I knew that uh, getting into coaching or really remaining in hockey that you know, I had a lot of my history and my background that was, was going to hold me back. Um, and that's why during my time here in Pembroke, I, I never necessarily had a, a master plan or, or um, really any real aspirations or goals as to where I wanted to go. I just wanted to live a day at a time and enjoy my time in Pembroke. Obviously being the owner of the team, you know, gives my, gave myself a lot of freedom and really for the first time uh, in a number of years, an opportunity to establish some, some real roots and settle down. And obviously got married and started to build a family. All those things that are really difficult uh, to, to come by as, as a player, you know. Uh, I lived in, you know, in seven different cities in my first four years playing professional hockey, and then through junior hockey as I've as I've gone through here, you know, you played a lot of different cities there as well. Um, you know, I moved away from home essentially when I was 15 years old uh, to pursue hockey, which a lot of young Canadians do. Um, so it was an opportunity for the, for me to just focus uh, on me and really start to create an, ident I, I, an identity for myself. Here, here in Ottawa, in the Ottawa Valley, in particular in Pembroke. So that's really what my focus was. And you know, when you first start coaching, you don't know whether you're whether you're good or not. You don't know. You really don't know whether you know what you're doing until you start to start to uh, start to do it and start to see how people react to you and start to see the results that you get out of the people that you're dealing with. And um, once we started to have success, I, you know, over time started to believe that maybe there was a future, but. Obviously, had uh, you know a, a great weight, you know, on on my shoulders on any chances of advancing. So, again, I just really stuck to to what I knew, which was putting a good product on the ice in Pembroke and developing young players and trying to network and and uh, treat my players well and their families well, with you know having ultimate confidence that eventually, 
know, if you touch enough people in a positive way that uh, you know, eventually you're going to find someone to believe in you. And I was very fortunate that Kyle Dubis, our general manager in Sault Ste. Marie, and our ownership group there, um, they did believe in me and gave me the opportunity and uh, hopefully continue to make the best of it. Was there a point where you were, were down in the dumps and sort of saying, you know, I've, I've, I've done something that no other coach in the history of this league has done. I've won five consecutive titles. I brought only the second national championship to the CCHL following Brian Murray's uh, 1970s team in, in Rockland. And yet the phone isn't ringing. Nobody's calling me to coach at a higher level. What was going through your mind? Well, you know, a couple different things. Obviously, for me, you, 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 it's easy to go back to say, well, the Frost stuff is holding me back, and, and that's the reason. But ultimately, and one of the, the big things I learned, and it was through my coach in, in Tampa, from I used through there, John Tortorella, one of the big things I learned and that he taught me, and I think I lacked up until you know, running into him in Tampa, um, was to respect the game. And as much as I felt you know, that I was being held back a little bit or that that was working against me, I know there's a lot of quality people out there. There are a lot of people that are doing well at all different levels. There's a lot of coaches that are looking for very few jobs at the different levels that are available. Um, so again, I just tried to focus on, on being me and doing well and making sure that um, you know, I worked with our players directly to develop players, uh, treat them well, treat their families well, represent the, the Lumber Kings in a positive manner, and deal with everyone that I deal with in terms of you know, the colleges or the major junior teams that come calling on our young players, make sure I touch as many people in a positive way as possible. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen. But certainly there was frustrating times. I think in particular after winning the RBC, that was the one time really for me, I sort of really for the first time started to think, okay, what's, what's next now? And up until that point, you know, even after winning all the league championships, you, know, you, you, still, you still felt like you had more in the tank. And I, and I don't want to don't want to say that I, I ever really sat in my office and said, geez, I really need to win the RBC, because I really didn't think that way. But I, I, for myself, I always felt like I had more to give and more to give and more to do. But after winning that national championship, um, you know, as the, the, the celebrations and everything settled down, you started to, or for myself, started to think, you know, okay, what now? And uh, that was really the first time when I started to, to look and look around and ask questions and uh, pursue leads that were out there, um, and that ultimately you know, led to Sault Ste. Marie, which was really the first time that someone came looking and calling for me, um, other than an opportunity that I had to interview for a job uh, just that just last summer um, in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. I guess uh, really that, I should say, is the first time someone came calling. Ultimately, it didn't work out, but um, very fortunate to, to be in a real good situation in Sault Ste. Marie now.